Sound can be described as the brain's interpretation of a physical stimulus in the form of a pressure wave arriving at the ear. Have you ever asked the question, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? The scientific definition would indicate it does. Philosophically, it is still up for debate. The point is, we listen using our brains. The reception of the physical stimuli by the human ear is a critical part of the nature of sound. A sound or sound pressure wave has three distinct elements, generation, propagation, and reception. Generation is the act of creating sound pressure waves by moving air particles. Propagation is the actual travel between the source or generator and the person who hears it. The last element is the receiver. That is, a human ear and the interpretation by the brain. When sound is generated, vibrations move through the air, propagating away from the source. A sound wave propagates through a medium via a series of alternating compression rarefaction cycles. The sound source, or the origin of the pressure wave or sound, begins a chain reaction which causes nearby molecules to compress. As the energy is further transmitted, the compressed molecules become rarefied or spread apart, while the neighboring molecules then become compressed. This process continues until the energy of the pressure wave is expended. The common term used to describe frequency is pitch. Pitch refers to frequency and timbre of a given sound. Frequency is how often a sound pressure wave repeats itself per second. We use the term cycles per second, or hertz, to define frequency. Timbre can be described as the character of a sound. Two instruments playing the same frequency or note sound different because each has a different timbre. For example, a piano and a saxophone are both playing the note A440, which has a frequency of 440 hertz. Although the frequency is the same, the instrument's timbre tells us which instrument is the piano and which is the saxophone. The human ear is capable of detecting the frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz, or 20 kilohertz. The speed of sound is the rate at which sound waves propagate. We call this rate velocity. As a base unit, we will use 1130 feet per second as the speed of sound. The length of a sound pressure wave is known as its wavelength. Wavelength is the distance covered in one cycle. Wavelength is calculated by dividing the velocity by the frequency. The distance above or below the center line of a sine wave to the peak and valley is the amplitude. A waveform has both positive and negative amplitude. We interpret amplitude as the level or volume of the signal. Phase describes the time relationship between multiple signals and how they affect one another. When waves are in phase, their amplitudes are combined, creating a greater amplitude. If waves are out of phase, they will have a canceling effect. Our ears are sensitive transducers that respond to changes in pressure. Our ears collect and process these changes 
and transmit them to the brain by way of nerve impulses. A transducer is a device that converts one form of energy to another. The ear is comprised of several parts, each with a specific function. Hearing starts with the outer ear. When a sound is made outside the outer ear, the sound waves or vibrations travel down the ear canal and strike the eardrum. The eardrum vibrates. These vibrations are then passed to three tiny bones in the middle ear called the ossicles, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. The ossicles amplify the sound and send the sound waves to the inner ear and into the fluid-filled hearing organ, the cochlea. Once the sound waves reach the inner ear, they are converted by tiny hairs into electrical impulses, which the auditory nerve sends to the brain. The brain then translates these electrical impulses as sound. The brain is the key component when it comes to listening. We listen with our brain, not our ears. The ear is the transducer that converts the acoustical sound pressure wave into an electrical impulse the brain interprets. The ear is a nonlinear transducer. This means that it has a varying level of sensitivity to loudness based on frequency. The Fletcher Munson equal loudness contour curves indicate the ear's sensitivity to varying frequencies at different loudness levels. For example, if a 500 Hz tone is played at 110 dB, a 100 Hz tone would have to be played 6 dB louder, and a 1000 Hz tone would have to be 3 dB louder to be perceived as the same volume. The ear is most sensitive between the frequencies of 1 kHz and 4 kHz, which coincidentally happens to be the frequency range at which a baby cries. Perception of loudness is how loud in volume a sound appears to be. This is important because a sound's apparent volume and its actual power or energy are not always the same. The ears and brain work together to estimate the distance of a sound source. The overall level of a sound, the time arrival, the timbre of the sound, and the ratio of direct to reflected sound within a space are the elements required for the brain to perceive the distance of the sound source. Auditory cues for the perception of the size of a space include sound intensity or loudness, frequency, and time arrival. The brain measures differences in time, energy, and frequency between direct sound and the early and late reflections of the sound to distinguish size. Spatial localization is the ability to perceive the location of a sound source. The brain uses two separate cues to determine the location of a sound source. These cues are the time and intensity difference between the two ears. When sound reaches one ear, it has greater intensity than when it reaches the other ear. This is because the sound pressure waves must travel around the head, losing energy in the process. This loss of intensity and time arrival differential allows the brain to recognize the location of the sound source. Surround sound manipulates the way the brain perceives direction, distance, and space. The brain locks onto what it hears first, not necessarily the loudest. Sound pressure level, commonly known as SPL, is how we quantify the level or amplitude of a sound pressure wave. It is expressed in decibels or dB. Three decibel level thresholds to keep in mind are the threshold of hearing, feeling, and pain. 
The threshold of hearing is the level an average person can hear a specific frequency about half of the time. This level is noted to be 0 dB SPL, or 0 decibels. The threshold of feeling is approximately 118 dB SPL. The threshold of feeling is considered to be the level where most listeners experience discomfort about half of the time. The threshold of pain is approximately 140 dB SPL. This level will cause pain for most listeners. The first step to understanding sound and sound reinforcement systems is grasping the basic fundamentals of sound. The definition of sound, the elements of a sound pressure wave, the anatomy of the ear, and the interpretation by the brain are the first building blocks you must understand and learn. When you understand the fundamental elements of sound, you will begin to better understand why things sound the way they sound. Remember, we listen with our brain. Think about what you are hearing. This is where it all begins and ends.